This is Sugru. It's um, a material that I've pretty much been obsessed with for the last nine years. Um, I invented it um, and it's a new self-setting rubber. So the way it works is that it comes in little airtight packs and um, keeping it away from the air makes it stay like very much like Play-Doh or modelling clay. Um, and then once you take it out of the pack you've got about half an hour to form it and uh, attach it to something and um, after that it will cure in the air to become a really tough and durable and really nice tactile silicone rubber. Um, and it will bond to lots of different materials, so from metals and glass to ceramics to hard plastics and things like that. Um, I invented it uh, as a way to give people um, a new way to fix things, to hack things and to reimagine their stuff um, and to make fixing relevant again. Um, so just a few examples, um, here you can see somebody has replaced the missing button on an electric toothbrush, um, an iron that kept falling over, somebody's attached little feet to make it not, not do that anymore, or um, you know, uh, uh, somebody has manipulated their bike lights to attach magnets to them so they're easier to put on. So lots of little design tweaks with your stuff. Um, it started out as an experiment and uh, so, uh, sort of a random, a random experiment and an idea while I was studying at the Royal College of Art in 2003. Um, and I just imagined a world where it was normal for things to morph and for people to manipulate their stuff to make it work better for them. Um, and I guess what could be easier than a really functional uh, Play-Doh? Um, so it's been a pretty long journey um, I spent five years developing the science and technology for this material by building a team of scientists and business people and designers. Um, I never felt that we could really build our own brand because my vision for Subaru was very big. I really felt like this idea deserved to be a household brand. So the logical uh, way to approach that from a business perspective was to build a partnership. Um, and I spent a long time trying to build partnerships with sort of multinational uh, uh, brand, uh, glue brands. Um, and that, it, it didn't come to fruition. And uh, so at one stage, we um, got the confidence to think that we could build our own brand. Um, and a friend said to me, uh, start small and make it good. Um, and that was a turning point for me. Instead of thinking big, it was about thinking small and growing something. Um, and today, over 100,000 people are using Sugru around the world, 110 countries on seven continents. And we have a business uh, based in East London where we employ 23 people across our factory uh, creative team and the general business. And it's really working. People are tweaking their stuff. They're really fixing stuff and really enjoying it and very proud of it and sharing, sharing it and uh, inspiring other people to do the same. Um, the creativity and the spirit of our customers um, and what they do with it is really amazing. Um, so just to tell you a few stories, um, this is a camera, um, we, ha we, we get emails all the time with uh, stories of what people do. So Stefan was a customer in Germany, he has a three year old that he wants to encourage him, he was really into taking photographs, but cameras for children are really badly designed and they take really bad photos, but it's a bit risky to just give him the camera. So he really built up these beautifully shaped um, walls to protect the camera um, and this is a Saturday project and um, uh, transformed that, um, that object for his family, you know, took full ownership over it, you know, it's not about keeping a precious thing up, it's about like making it, accepting it as a tool and making it work for you. Um, this is Joanne, she emailed us, we gave her the Fix of the Month comp uh, winner, she was a Fix of the Month winner in July. Um, she's a canoeist and um, she really wants to do this epic canoe race um, but, and it's 700 kilometres long um, but there was only one problem is that she has no fingers on her left hand um, so uh, she really wanted to do it so she had to find a way and she got a friend to help her to drill a screw into the paddle and to build a screw up around it so that she got a shape that she could paddle um, so that she could paddle with both hands because you couldn't just paddle on one side such a long race. Um, she sent us all these pictures and um, she completed the race in three days and three nights of straight paddling um, with no sleep and she emailed us to say that she wouldn't have been able to do that race if she hadn't been able to modify her paddle, which um, I just think is incredible. 
Um, design is at the heart of everything that we do, from the design of the product, so you know, what could be easier than clay and Play-Doh? Colours are designed in, it's about being proud of your stuff, showing off your repair. Um, and of course, all, um, all that we do is around designing the experience of fixing to make that as exciting and as rewarding as possible to attract as many people as possible to do it. Um, and language is something that's very important as well. We believe that design is really at the heart of what our customers do in that like, they're tweaking designs and improving them. However, we never really use the word design um, because it just it doesn't uh, inspire the same uh, creativity actually in non-designers as these, these sort of words do. So we, we, these are the sort of words that we use. Um, just another uh, quick story around uh, users behaving like designers. We um, just uh, recently doing a project with uh, Leon Paul, which is a fencing uh, equipment brand, and they supply the GB Olympic team and US Olympic team. Um, we've been working on a product with them for um, the last year or so, which is a co-designed product. product. Um, the handle of the fencing foil comes with hollowed parts um, marked out, and it comes with Subaru so that the fencers can customise it um, for, apparently it was started, the idea started was it was about uh, customising it for the shape of their hand. But something very interesting happened um, once the fencers got it in their hands. They um, started manipulating it first for, for comfort and for grip, but very quickly, intuitively, without any training or explanation, they started to manipulate the shape of the handle, so building little ridges that would help them get more power um, and uh, leverage and stuff. So there's something really exciting there, which is around a sort of a, beha a, be a user behaviour, which is very intelligent um, mm. and I think very exciting. Um, our vision for Subaru is big. We want to help the world to get fixing again, and um, we feel that we're really just at the beginning. Um, business for us is just a means to an end. It's we'll do whatever we have to do to make that vision happen. Um, and I think a world where people fix and tweak and make will be a better world for all of us. So, thank you.